neighbors. Everybody needs good neighbors. In the 1980s, a British researcher played that song, that horrendous song, to 15 newborn babies. He found that the babies were more likely to stop crying and pay attention to the song if their mothers had regularly watched neighbors during pregnancy. It was as though the newborns remembered all those weak nights at 6.30 p.m. when that same familiar tune would come wafting through the womb. Studies like that one show us that learning doesn't actually begin at birth. It begins even before that, and for a very good reason. Gaining that extra bit of information so early could give you a head start that lasts an entire lifetime. Take, for example, the animal that I'm studying, a small Australian songbird called the zebra finch. Zebra finches live across most of the Australian mainland, from the outskirts of Melbourne all the way to the arid red centre. What this means is if you're a zebra finch embryo, about to break free from the egg and into the great wide world, you really have no idea whether you're hatching out into a hot environment or a cold one. But evolution has found a way to get that information across. When it starts to get hot inside the nest, above 26 degrees, zebra finch parents begin to call. It's a quiet, high-pitched call that you probably wouldn't notice unless you're actually listening for it. But deep at the bottom of the nest, a tiny zebra finch embryo, still inside the egg, is most certainly listening in. <coughs> Here's where it gets really interesting. Simply hearing this heat call inside the egg changes how the chick develops in hot temperatures. It will grow more slowly in the nest, so it has a smaller body size. This smaller body size potentially means that the chick loses heat more easily to cool down. And over its lifetime, this small advantage translates to increased reproductive success. Essentially, by talking to their unhatched eggs, zebra finches can program their children to perform better in hot temperatures. This is a pretty amazing behavior, but how does it actually work? How can simply hearing a call change the development of an embryo? And we still don't fully understand the answer to that question. One theory, which I'm putting to the test as part of my PhD, is that hearing this heat call stimulates the embryo's brain, causing it to alter its behavior later in life. For example, as a nestling begging for food, or as an adult seeking to attract a mate. And I think it is important that we get to the bottom of this question. With global warming turning up the heat worldwide, having this sort of flexibility could allow some bird species to survive and adapt in an increasingly unpredictable world. Thank you.